This is Q's to be. Dan LaFever, 6'3, 230. And I'm a Q to be. sets up. Looking, looking, going to the end zone. Touchdown. LaFever, he will move out of the pocket. He's a big kid, he rolls into the end zone. Touchdown. I remember after my freshman year talking to a friend of mine after he graduated and he was getting ready for the draft. He's like, you know, you're going to do great when you get to the next level. And I'm like, you really think so? Dan's redshirt freshman year, Brian Brunner, our starting quarterback, takes off in a scramble, gets, gets hit, concussion out of the game, and as I like to often say, I'll pop Superman, and, and the rest is history. He's a big kid, he tucks, he gets into the end zone. Dan Lefevre out of Central Michigan is very intriguing on a couple of levels. First, compared to some of the other players that are two or three year starters, this guy's been a program for five years. He's a four year starter. There is a ton of tape to look at this guy. He's a big, strong athlete right along the lines of a Tim Tebow. In fact, he outran Tim Tebow in the combine. When I first got here, we won six games, and you know, leaving here, we won 12 and finished the top 23 in the nation. I'm proud of a lot of the accomplishments we've done and to see what's going to happen in the future at CMU. Within two hours of the bowl game being over, I kind of started that process to, to get ready for the next level. In a lot of cases, these quarterbacks are actually diamonds in the rough because they played in different systems and situations where, for instance, Dan was in the shotgun. So everybody wanted to know, can he take snaps from the center? Or can he drop 3-5 and, and do the bootlegs and all those kind of things? And so that's where we worked. Set! Okay, move up, go left, go right, throw left. Make sure you always keep your feet. And let your feet tell you when to throw the ball. Yeah. Coach Brad Kelsey has been great to work with. Obviously, he had more than 40 years' experience in the NFL as a player and coach. The knowledge that he brings is second to none. I try to be a devil's advocate a lot of times watching his college tapes, ask questions like coaches are going to ask him. And you can pull out from them and see their football intelligence pretty quickly. Okay, now put up what would be your favorite pass from there against the front. And maybe the coverage wouldn't be the same here okay. because of the three on one side. The game is getting so complex that the quarterbacks have to just have this kind of knowledge. And it's obvious that Danny's got this. So these are important sessions that he'll have with coaches and coordinators and everything prior to draft time. Um, a lot of times in 3 by one we would either see cover three or quarters. And for a lot of this, we'd see with quarters, this backside safety would cross-read number three. So we try to get him out of there with a vertical, and we could put a high-low stretch on the curl flat player, which a lot of times is that will backer. Well, I think the one thing that makes Dan LeFever an outstanding prospect is the fact that uh, he has a very high football IQ. I think that's where it starts. If you can see somebody's very methodical and analytical about looking at defenses and things, you know that this is a real prospect. I'd say the strengths that I bring to the quarterback position are great leadership, great communicator, very intense, competitive, also strong arm, accurate, mobile, being able to move in the pocket and make plays with my feet. Dan LeFever's throwing style, a lot of people have equated it to a Peyton Manning, which obviously says a lot. Uh, the good thing about it, it's, it's not a low delivery, it's not a three-quarter delivery. He's way over the top, and at 6'3", uh, you add that additional height, that can be a positive. I guess you'd have to ask my dad how that started, maybe playing catch in the backyard, and it was just the natural way I picked up a ball and started throwing it. If you stay behind the ball, in a sense, like you do playing it off, you stay behind the ball, well, the longer you stay behind, the further that arm goes forward and that release points out front and up high. He's got good techniques and he's got a great future. I think he made a mistake not throwing in the combine. I think he had an opportunity there because so many of the quarterbacks didn't throw, mostly because of medicals, Bradford, McCoy, Jimmy Clausen, Tim Tebow obviously not throwing for a different set of reasons. He had an opportunity to maybe separate himself from that group or put himself more firmly into that group by getting out and throwing at the combine. I think he missed an opportunity. I'd be lying if I said I didn't want to, but you know, the rational side of me said that you already stuck with this decision. You made it for a reason. You have all these reasons not to. I think he was poorly advised, whoever's advising him. I think part of it may have been ego that, hey, the big guys aren't working out and I'm one of the big guys, so I'm not going to work out. 
When you're from Central Michigan, you're not one of the big guys. You gotta take every opportunity you can to work out. So I don't know that it hurt him. I think he just had a missed opportunity. Usually it's decisions made between he and the agent, and I, I don't try to sell them one way or the other. Having been a coach, you don't spend your whole time looking at the indie film to see how he's throwing. The only thing you get from is maybe a, a size differential between the other ones and also arm strength, that type of thing. I thought that my body of work at, um, you know, throughout the season and then at the Senior Bowl was, was pretty significant and I just wanted to put the best product I could out there come pro day. This is a big physical good athlete. Again, there's no reason he shouldn't be a good quarterback. He's got the good arm strength. It's again just can he develop the mechanics of taking the exchange from center, of doing the different drops, making the progression reads. He is likely to fall in that second or third round in the second day. Nothing against me. People that are, you know, draft experts, but they don't have a draft pick come that weekend. And you gotta realize that, you know, it's great to hear and you know, they're obviously having more knowledge than the average fan and everything, but I don't know. I mean, if it's good or bad, you kind of have to, you know, close your ears to that because they really can't control your destiny a whole lot. You just got to keep working and control what you can control. In a perfect world for Dan Fever, I just want a chance for the next level. I don't care about what round I go in, what team I go to. I just want that opportunity to be able to go out from the field and show what I have.